Okay, so uh, just before we jump into it, um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, uh, which we are virtually meeting on today um, in uh, Melbourne. It is the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, um, but I know as Nathan and Chris mentioned that there are people um, from a whole lot of different places um, that have joined us. So yeah, you obviously have different traditional custodians, um, but we would like to recognise their continuing connection to the land and waters and community, and we pay their respects to their uh, cultures and their elders uh, present and emerging. So what we are going to do uh, today is really jump into, uh, I guess, the resources that Google has produced uh, in terms of supporting schools during this um, unprecedented time in education uh, and also really, I guess, jump in hands on demonstrate uh, both uh, Google Meet, which we are all in right now. And if you are confused by the name, I'll talk through our naming conventions in a little bit as well um, and Google Classroom specifically. Um, but we're going to share a few generic, uh, I guess, resources as well. And if there's any specific questions about anything else, please feel free uh, to drop it in the chat and we will address it. Um, we're going to come back to this, but if you haven't seen this resource, um, this was produced by Google in partnership with UNESCO. It's called it's teachfromhome.google is the address. I know that um, you're, you'll have to fight your, your um, natural instinct to type a .com on the end of that, but the .google is the extension of that address. Uh, and this is um, a hub of information about how to help, um, I guess, this teaching in different situations. Now, not everybody is teaching from home. Um, this is a global website. So um, if you are teaching at school and you're, if you're teaching a partial cobrid, cobrid, co, co, what's, hybrid. hybrid. Thank, hybrid. thank you, Chris. I was, uh, I'm blending words together. If you're teaching in a hybrid uh, way, that's totally fine as well. This resource is really designed uh, to be um, mm. somewhere where you can go as a starting point, get a whole lot of information, upskill yourself and resources. And we will come back at the end um, and go through this at a, and some other resources as well. But this is sort of our major um, support page for all things uh, during this time. So this afternoon, what we're going to do is we're going to um, just go through, uh, as I mentioned, our, our, our premium Google Meet product, which everybody is using right now. We're going to talk about Google Classroom for uh, distance learning. We're going to go over our resources um, and we are going to have lots of time for questions. So please continue to drop them in the chat. All right, but we're going to kick off straight away by uh, jumping into Google Meet and I'm going to stop sharing uh, my screen in just a moment. Here we go. Uh, so uh, Chris and I were talking about this concept of uh, demonstrating Google Meet when you're all in a Google Meet and uh, Chris did suggest that we could just say, welcome, this is Google Meet and then move on to the next thing um, because you are all in it right now. But we wanted to make sure that you're aware of some of the really awesome features that are built into Meet. My hands down favorite thing about Meet um, is actually a, an incredible inclusive technology built into it. And that is the live captions. So if you're, you're all in the Meet right now, or if you're watching this in the recording in Meet, when you move your mouse over the screen, you'll actually see that you get the menu bar pop up at the bottom of the Meet. This is where you can mute yourself, turn your camera off, etc. And you'll see on the right hand side, there is turn on captions. I've never had 151 people in a call try doing this at once, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but in theory, what should happen is that if I turn on my captions, that I will actually start to have uh, everything that is being said live captioned for me. Um, and this is an amazing, amazing resource um, to use with uh, students and <laughs> Uh, and kids in class, whether they're and adults as well, uh, because we all know that there is a huge cognitive leap um, when we have the ability to not just listen, but also um, read what is being said. And Chris, can you just chime in so we can have another person jump into yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. So the nice thing is that when uh, the person who's speaking changes, you notice that it actually changes that down the bottom as well. So you actually get a running commentary of who is speaking, as, yeah. as Helen just showed us a second ago. Yeah, so that is just a, another reminder, please do stay muted or you will come up in the captioning for everyone as well, which is fine, depending on what it is that you're saying, obviously. Um, so um, that is uh, captions. You can turn that on and off uh, very easily just by hitting toggling that bottom again. Uh, and I can see some questions coming through already. Um, uh, so a question about recording uh, the captions. So if you are recording the, the meet, 
um, it uh, will record the captions in the recording. But if you are just doing a meet live, then there is no saving of the, of the captions as such. So a lot of the way that schools are using meet right now is to have um, just check-ins, um, circle time, that sort of thing with students or, or they're running a class live with students um, through meet. And if you're not recording the call, then the captions um, disappear <laughs> into I the- I believe the word is ephemeral. I don't okay that word at the end of the uh, at the end of the call so uh, I would suggest recording uh, the meet if you did want to um, have the captions recorded yeah I am going to jump in and show you something in slides in a little while and I'll show you we actually have captioning in slides as well which is another option for um, using this technology uh, were there any other key questions just then Chris that you saw no, can you change the color of the captions um, uh, reader I can see that question you cannot yet um, but um, I say yet because one of the things about all Google tools is that um, one of our innovation principles is to launch early and iterate so um, any of you who've been using uh, Google's tools for a while will know that uh, we love to launch and change products constantly and they're evolving uh, and this captioning is relatively new um, and the captioning in slides which I mentioned before that's been out for a little bit longer. And when that first came out, you couldn't customize anything about the captioning and you now can. So uh, I would suggest that um, that it'll only be a matter of time before we might be able to customize this. But at this point, that's not an official thing either. That's just my concept of the fact that we change it. We iterate all the time and make things better. Mm. Any other Chris, qu questions, Chris, about yeah, that? Yeah, there was a question there from, I think it was Mary. She asked, uh, how did we get a holding room? How did we actually hold people to not enter the meeting until we were ready. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that, Mary, is that uh, because Kimberly and I were the meeting organisers, um, that uh, we could come into the meeting and then we get the right to approve people coming in from outside the domain. Um, so it is a domain issue. It's because you guys are not in the domain that's running this, uh, this meeting that um, you're being uh, challenged to come in and we have to admit you manually. That wouldn't happen if you uh, were all in the same domain. Uh, and we are also going to talk about now um, some of this has been really big changes in meat. So um, one of the really interesting things about this time, because it's a global time, um, uh, G Suite and Chrome are the number one used tool by American schools. And so uh, what we've seen is um, globally this huge increase in use. And we've had this incredible support from the um, uh, Google back end of engineers who've put a whole lot of time and resources behind um, anything that's being used to support schools at this time. And so we are seeing changes come out in Meet um, and the way we use Meet constantly. And there are a couple of really big changes that came out um, in terms of integration into classroom, which will help you get some teacher controls, which I'll look at now, um, and uh, also the ability to set up a nickname Meet, which gives some of those teacher controls as well. Um, okay, any other pressing questions or should I jump into um, showing a couple of other things? Uh, Mary did ask a follow-up question there about uh, how do you prevent students from entering the Meet? unsupervised but i'm sure you'll come to that in the rest of the things we're about to talk about i will absolutely so um what we're going to do now and i will uh jump to the uh let me just share my screen here again so because we are in meet um right now and turn off here let me just oh, you're doing that it's also worth pointing out uh, that as well as this um video being recorded uh, all the comments in the chat that you guys are taking place in will also be recorded and that all we'll get that as a Google Doc at the end um, with the entire conversation from the chat. So yeah. we'll capture all your questions. And that's a really good one. One of the things that I've had a few teachers talk to me about um, is this concept of we have this live meeting, we have all the kids in here, um, anyone can chat. Um, who's in a call um, and obviously we want to make sure we know who's in a call particularly when we have uh, students uh, in a call but if we are uh, in a call um, and uh, someone says something in the chat uh, you cannot at this point you can't actually edit that chat even as the meeting creator so in most cases that would be the teacher um, but you because if you record the call and it does as Chris said export the chat to a Google Doc um, we've talked about proactively talking to kids about that so you know every Everything's going to be saved. It will have the timestamp, the person said it, um, the name, etc. So everything is uh, there. 
Um, so uh, I just wanted to flag, and as I said, I will share all of these resources. And Chris, actually, you might be able to grab this link and drop it in the chat now as well. Um, so we, we've made a huge number of changes to me, um, and uh, Chris is going to jump into classroom in a little bit. But one of the major things that um, we have done is actually build in the integration between Google Meet and Google Classroom. Um, and what this actually has enabled us to do is add, um, I guess, some additional, I, I call them teacher controls. I don't think they're actually technically teacher controls, but they're things that we want to have happening as teachers um, when we actually use Meet through Google Classroom as opposed to uh, Google Calendar or just going to meet.com. So um, traditionally when we were using Google Meets, which was Google Hangouts, then got renamed to Google Hangouts Meet and now is just Google Meet. So I know that naming convention is confusing. So there is still a product called Hangouts, but that is being um, completely moved into solely being text-based chat and Google Meet is the video conference tool now so um, was hangouts so if you if you've heard that language a lot that's where the confusion is coming from we had this product called Google Hangouts it became hangouts meet and now we've dropped the hangouts from it so it's just Google meet um, but hangouts exists solely as a chat um, platform so with meet we are seeing a whole lot of um, really great uh, things added so um, as I mentioned if we use meet uh, through classroom, what it actually does, and you can see there's a GIF here, and um, so Chris, you may not even have to show it live because I realise we've got a GIF on the screen right now, um, but in your classroom settings, you can actually easily go in and create a meet that will basically become a meeting space for that particular class. So it is specific to that individual class within classroom. So if you have multiple classes within classroom, you do need to create a different meet for every class. Um, as the teacher, you can toggle on and off whether that is visible to students or not, so whether it'll appear in the banner at the top of classroom or not. But the thing that makes it um, a little bit unique from the Meet that you would just call, um, sorry, you would just create if you're using calendar or just meet.google.com is that this link cannot be joined by <laughs> students until a teacher has joined the call. So this call will exist. They can click on the link, but it will say that they actually can't join it until until you are actually in the call. So um, effectively it creates that, uh, uh, that holding room or it creates that space where it, we know that there is a, a live video um, call ready to use, but we can't use it until the teacher is in there. Um, one thing on that, I know that not everybody is using Google Classroom. Um, uh, so if you are not using Google Classroom, you'll see in this uh, document, and we, as I said, I said, well, sorry, once again, we do have um, all of these links that we will share out. Um, you can actually create a, um, a what's called a nicknamed meet, which is um, if I jump over to, let me share this tab, uh, meet.google.com, which is the naming convention for all of our products actually. Um, so docs.google.com, meet.google.com, uh, etc. So you'll see here where I click on um, join or start a meeting that if I had a code, um, so you can see in our call we're in now that there's a 10 digit, 10, yeah, 10 character code at the end of meet.google.com, which is our unique call. So I could type those 10 uh, letters in here and join this call, or I can create a nicknamed call here. So if I do DLTV webinar and click continue, it's actually going to create for me a um, custom uh, link, which I don't need to see myself in multiple different places, um, a custom link. You'll see here that, that this meet is called DLTV webinar. And this nicknamed meet also inherits that same um, sort of extra security as the classroom meet where um, this one can only be joined by others when the uh, organizer of the meet is already in there. So um, if I have a meet that's through my calendar, just to reiterate, anyone can join at any point Point when they have the link, but if I have it in um, as a nicknamed meet or as a classroom meet, then it does actually add that extra layer of um, teacher control to the meet. Um, all right, I'm going to jump back over into the call and share this tab instead. <laughs> Wow. That was a nice sound, wasn't it? Everybody enjoyed that one. Yeah. Um, 
So you'll see that um, we have actually recently, one of the updates has also come out into me is that you can now just share a specific Chrome tab. So you used to have to choose to share your entire screen or an entire application window. Um, now we have the ability to share a Chrome tab and you'll see on the screen right now that I was able to toggle on and off the audio associated with that tab. Part of what this enables you to do is actually in, um, watch a video if you wanted to and have the audio go through the meet. Um, and that's a, a new feature as well in there. But if I just jump over here into back into my meet, so you can see here, you can see that I am presenting. Um, you, this is where you select to present in your meet. And then um, our three dots on the far right of the bottom of the screen, we um, often call them our skinny snowman. That is where you will find uh, the other setting to do with the meet. Um, and uh, you can see here that we have the option. Um, this is where I chose to record before. You can see now it says meeting is recorded. This is where I would have chosen to start the recording. Um, I can change my layout in here. Um, and we did release uh, last week the grid view option um, integrated into Meet. I know lots of people I saw in the chat are using the Chrome extension for the grid view. It is now uh, natively in Meet as well. Um, I can also turn on my captions. Uh, you can use a phone for audio, which can be really helpful if you do have um, spotty internet at home. You can actually dial in using a phone and that will be your audio rather than um, through your computer. Um, and then we have our settings in here. So I will just show these settings because this has saved um, a whole lot of um, stress for some teachers. Um, one thing just to reiterate is that you can come into these settings and you can actually jump into your video settings and you can reduce the quality of the video. And if you don't have particularly awesome Awesome internet at home, like like most of Australia, um, then I would potentially consider uh, reducing the quality of your video um, rather than just re resulting, sorry, um, defaulting to turning off your camera. Um, because if we're trying to stay connected with kids, then I think there is some real value in them physically being able to see you in there as well. Um, okay, Chris, sorry, there was a couple of questions. Is every everybody's good? Sorry, I'll just to go back through them. Um, yeah, the questions are coming thick and fast. I can barely keep up. Um, uh, like, Ken, sorry, Kim just asked a question, like, what is G Suite? So, like, is it worth just, like, laying the groundwork for that, just for anyone who may not know? Because there's still a lot of people who ask that question. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. So, um, let me bring up a great site to help you with that. Any other questions about Meet uh, while I just bring this up? Um, uh, Mary again was asking a couple of questions about uh, if you want to use the uh, controlled hangout, sorry, the controlled meet, um, do you actually need to create classroom for that so you can have the, the, the meet button at the top there? Um, but I think you've hopefully explained that no, you can just create it as a nickname to meet. Yeah, and that link um, that I was displaying, and I think I think Chris, you dropped it in the chat already, but I'll just jump it in again now. So this was our um, blog post, and it's linked in the in the doc that we'll give you at the end as well. Um, and this uh, has uh, the information for how you set up that nicknamed meet. So remember, instead of joining a meet or just um, letting it automatically create a meet, I actually gave a name, um, and that is my meet that I have those controls on. Um, so so um, just taking a step back uh, just very quickly, and I am conscious of the, the time as well. So if you are relatively new to G Suite, and I know that there are a lot of people relatively new to G Suite um, globally, I think we're, what is that, our last count, 120 million uh, users in G Suite for Education now, um, which has uh, had a big jump in the last couple of months. Uh, G Suite is the, it used to be called Google Apps, for education, it's, it's Google's um, suite of tools that we provide for free to educators. Um, basically in G Suite, our core products um, are the, um, what if, you, if you're familiar with the Microsoft tools, they're um, replacing Microsoft Office type of tools. So we have docs, we have sheets, we have slides, um, we have Gmail, um, we have forms, which is a quiz tool, um, and sites, calendar, 
drive, which is your um, file repository, um, and all of that is included in G Suite for Education. Um, one of the unique things about G Suite for Education is that um, we do give it away to schools for free, and it is basically the exact same product as businesses pay for. So there is a G Suite for business, um, but um, Google actually made the decision that they were going to make this available for um, all schools and teachers because they believe in the power of, um, of this collaboration and creativity to change learning. Uh, I'm not going to labour too much on that, um, but if I'll drop this quickly here yeah, in the chat as well for if you wanted to check out the G Suite homepage, um, that if you're a Victorian Department of Education teacher, the Victorian Department does have a central G Suite tenant, which basically means that um, uh, they have an, uh, an overarching um, G Suite instance of G Suite that you as a school can join um, and then they will actually um, manage a lot of the administration for you around it, um, make sure that all your security and privacy settings and things like that um, are all in um, the, where they should be from the admin console. So that is um, in a nutshell G Suite for Education. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, any other quick questions? Um, um, yeah, there were a couple of questions there about scheduling scheduling a meet. And look, I think it's just worth pointing out um, that, you know, I think this COVID situation really caught most technology companies, not off guard, but like all technology companies have had a whole range of products for a long time. And all of a sudden with this COVID thing, the world kind of expected a lot of those products to behave differently. And so there was this massive uh, feature request um, avalanche that just hit not only Google, but the other providers as well, where suddenly people wanted these tools that have been around for years to do different things, to work in different ways that they'd never really thought about before because they'd never really had to think about it before. Uh, and so, you know, Meet's, Meet's been a great tool. We use it at Google all the time. There's a lot of companies that you know, live and breathe uh, Meet all the time as their video conferencing solution. Um, what I think we've all discovered, not just Google, in the last couple of months is that when you take a product that was designed for business and put it into education that suddenly there's a whole bunch of feature requests that people want so we've been working really hard to deliver those feature requests and there's been probably five six seven new features added to meet just in the last few weeks in response to the things that people are asking for um, there's a longer list of what people want that we have not yet managed to get into this tool but we're working really hard on so when I see questions like, you know, can you schedule a meet? That's an amazingly good idea. Um, we, no one's ever asked for it before, but we're, you can bet that those sorts of questions, we're working really hard to sort of build that into the product right now. Yeah, and I think that um, at the moment we know that um, teachers are some of the most resourceful and creative uh, workers of any field in the world, uh, and we're seeing ways that people are getting around that. So, um, you know, you can use that. Uh, I know I saw a question about can you use an, a nicknamed meet recurring? You can. It's, it's yours to keep that nicknamed meet. So you could add that to um, a, a calendar appointment or you know schedule it. However, you would normally schedule things with others. Um, you can switch out and add that meet name in there as well. Um, uh, just conscious of the time um, and I can say thank you um, to Samantha from um, the DT who is dropping in some links um, specifically for Victorian Department of Education teachers um, in there as well. Um, okay, Chris, um, just given the time and we want to make sure we get lots of time for classroom, um, uh, we'll jump uh, over to switch gears into classroom in just a second. And as I said, we're going to share um, a document that has links to all these things. So every process that we talked about with Meet, so live captioning, screen sharing, recording, um, setting up your classroom um, link or your um, nickname Meet. Um, we're going to have them all linked to the support pages that show you exactly how to do that um, as a takeaway as well. Um, but just quickly before you start on Classroom, um, Nathan or DLTV team, was there anything else that um, we didn't address that you would like us that we was glaringly obvious that we missed? Um, I, I wonder if, Kimberly, it would be worthwhile just um, very briefly just repeating the difference between a nicknamed room uh, a nickname meeting and non, just just so that everyone's clear on that and what permissions it allows and not. Yeah, absolutely. So um, traditional meet calls, basically, if you set up, uh, if you're using Google Calendar and you make a new appointment in Calendar and you choose a video conferencing option as part of that, it will make you a um, traditional meet link, um, just like the one we're in right now. Um, these don't come with any um, extra 
um, I guess what, what I've been referring to as teacher controls built into them, um, uh, except if they've been set up at the admin console, which Chris sort of alluded to earlier, which is a, 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 a four hour webinar in itself. Um, and uh, what we've done with the nicknamed meets and the meet through classroom is actually given, um, uh, being aware of the fact that um, when we're using these tools with education, that we need to think about um, the way that we have kids interacting with each other online and that we probably, I mean, it's up to the individual school, obviously, but we probably don't want to have kids having access to an open uh, video conference tool whenever and um, with whomever they choose to be in there, um, which is what your traditional meet call through your calendar is. It's just a live link that you can actually join at any time. When you have the nicknamed meet or the meet through classroom, the organiser of the meet is the only one that can actually start the meet. So the link um, comes up with a in like invalid, you can't join this type of um, thing or you get put into a waiting room until the organiser of the meet lets you in. Um, and uh, then it also gives you the additional features that um, you can mute others, but they can't mute each other. So Chris and I at the moment have the permission to mute others, mute, mute people in this call, but you can't mute one another. Um, and uh, that we can also, uh, the, we can uh, start the recording and um, keep that as well. Chris, did I miss any of those key features then no and i think like it's i agree that our it works better with our ecosystem if you're a classroom user using meet this is dead simple because you literally just switch it on in classroom the meet comes up there and all of the management of whether that link is live or not live and kids not not hanging around in an unsupervised that's all taken care of if you launch meet from inside classroom if you decide to not launch meet from inside classroom then you as kimberly said you need to manually create that that uh, nicknamed meeting, and there is a little bit more fiddliness to it. There is a couple more steps. So, you know, obviously, we, we build an ecosystem where all these tools work smoothly together, and you can kind of pick and choose which bits you work. But, um, you know, there'll be some extra steps. And I'll just say as well, one final thing on that. Um, we mentioned that the uh, Victorian Department of Education does have their central G Suite tenant. The um, Catholic Education Commission of Victoria also does. So if you're in a Catholic school in Victoria, you also have that option. Um, and one of the things I guess, um, and, and I think both systems, you, put, you know, you, you can choose to use it on your own if you want. That's totally fine. And many schools have been doing it for many years. Um, but I know from working with the Victorian Department of Education um, quite closely is that, you know, they have set it up so that students are in a particular organizational unit within the admin console that's different to the teachers and students have different permissions so no student can start a meet call yeah. um, from a department um, address because of the way it's set up um, so um, we do have a sorry question about um, where do I get uh, info on an admin uh, webinar and we do actually have um, some admin webinars that we can share with you so we'll make sure that they're at the end um, and then just very finally before um, we jump into classroom the one feature that some that Jen, thank you for just asking that question. Um, you just prompted neither Chris or I had remembered to mention this. So the other thing about the nickname meet or the meet through classroom is that um, once the teacher exits the call, if you so if you wait for all of the students to leave the call and you exit the call, um, then that meet link becomes inactive again. So it's only active while the teacher themselves is physically in the call as well. Yeah, essentially, if you launch a meet from within classroom, the only person who can launch the thing is the teacher. And as soon as the teacher leaves at the end, that meeting shuts down. It effectively burns the link. So the next time you start a new uh, meet, even though you're using the same physical link on the page, when you, when the teacher clicks it for the next time to start a new meeting, it actually generates a whole new session. It burns the old one, starts a new one, and when that session's finished, it burns that one and so on. So that's how it gets around that problem of the um, the persistent room that kids could go into unsupervised. All right, awesome. And um, let's jump into classroom and then we can come back to any additional questions as well. Um, and do, is, is there any, it, is it worth spending like a minute and a half just showing the, the structure inside the admin console just to explain how that works? Because I think it's a really important concept. Uh, let me just share my screen. Yeah, just keeping in mind that if you are in a central G Suite tenant, so if you're in a Victorian Department of Education school or a Catholic school in Victoria and you have joined the central G Suite tenant, that this setup is done for you. If you have not joined the, the central tenant, then this is what um, this what Chris is sharing now is for you. 
Yeah, I'm actually a little bit reticent to show it. I know there's 150 something people in the call here and for most of you, this is not relevant. So I'm literally gonna try and spend less than a minute or so on this because it's not relevant to most of you, but it is incredibly relevant to some of you. So what you're looking at here is the admin console. This is only something that administrators see. And there's this section here called organizational units. And within the organizational units, this is where you create the structure of your school. Now this particular, uh, instance I'm using here is something we use for a lot with inside Google, but I've just set up a little dummy here inside the Australia folder here. If I can get that to open up, there you go. So you see I've created this folder called school and within that folder, there is a subfolder called, come on, click on that, students and teachers, okay? It's really important that your school sets up a structure that clearly differentiates students from teachers because once that's set up, let me just go back to the homepage here, once that structure is set up, then what the administrator can do when they go into the apps here and go into say the G Suite apps, and again, bear in mind, if you're a teacher, this is not something you would see, right? Um, if I go into the, the Hangouts and the, uh, sorry, the Meet uh, section here, you'll see that when I go into any of these settings here, so for example, I saw the question that came up before about how do you prevent students from starting a meet call? There's a setting here in the administration console called video calling, let users place video calls. Now, if I go in and choose my uh, organizational unit here for, here's my school. So if I go to teachers, I want this setting turned on. But if I go to students, I actually want this setting, if I want to edit that and say, I want that to be turned off. So I'm going to override that setting. In other words, I'm allowing something to happen for the group, people who belong to the uh, staff group or teacher group, but I'm disallowing it for something in the student group. It's really important that that stuff gets organized. If you don't get the administration console structured correctly, then a whole lot of stuff obviously is not going to work the way it's supposed to work. Okay, that's all I want to say on the admin console. If you've got more questions, please hit us up later, but um, it is a, kind of an important deal. Okay. Um, can you just confirm you're seeing my uh, classroom? I am in your classroom, yes. Okay, fantastic. So I'm just gonna really quickly create a classroom to show you how easy that is. So I am at classroom.google.com, simply the same naming structure that Kimberly mentioned before. Uh, there's a few classrooms in here. Each one of these colored blocks represents a class or a classroom. Uh, and I'll hit the little uh, plus button in the top corner here. As a teacher, I get the option to join a class or create a class. Obviously, if I'm a teacher, I'll be creating a class. So I'll just call this uh, DLTV. And I could fill in this other stuff, but I'll leave it blank for now. So that's now creating a classroom for me. It's creating one of these blank, empty rooms, virtual rooms. Um, so that's step one. Now, whenever you create a classroom, it's a really good idea to just make sure it works the way you want. Just like before school starts, you'd go into your own physical classroom and you'd uh, you make sure it works the way you want. So all I've done here, when I'm in my newly created classroom, I'll click on this little cog wheel up in the top corner and it opens up the settings for this classroom. There's a couple of settings in here. You can obviously set these any way you like, um, but there's a couple of things I would recommend. One is this thing called the stream. Think about the stream as the social area of the classroom. Personally, I think it's a lot less manic if you let students comment on things in that front stream, but not necessarily post. Now, you can choose that students can post and comment, or you can turn it off so only teachers can post and comment. I like the middle one, that's my choice, but be aware that setting is there. The other setting that's in here that you might wanna know about, here is the Meet setting that Kimberly talked about. So if I wanna add a Meet call to this classroom, I can click on that button, generate the Meet link, and it gets turned on. And when I, when I exit out of here, you'll see it's now on the front page. The other thing you might wanna think about while you're on this here is a classroom has a grading, uh, has the ability to grade student work and it has a classwork, uh, sorry, a, uh, like a mark book, a grade book incorporated inside classroom. Now, when you're creating grades for students, you might want to just simply collect the grades, but you also might want to add them up either by total points, or you might wanna weight them by category. So for example, if I create a grade category and I might say, let's say homework, right? And I give another grade category called classwork. Oops. And I have another category called I don't know, exams, 
right? And I might say, okay, homework is going to be worth 20% of the grade, classwork is going to be worth 50% of the grade, and exams might be worth 30% of the grade, okay? I realise I'm talking high school here. If you're primary teachers, it's probably far less relevant. But once I set that, I can then say to my class, my, my grading book, I want you to weight things. Oh, didn't need to do that. Uh, 20, 50, 30. Should have done that up front. There you go. So, um, so I'm creating my weighting there. And now when Classroom collects the grades, uh, it'll actually weight them according to that, uh, that weighting scale that you've determined. Okay, so that's just a good thing to know. Uh, now, in terms of actually, I've got my classroom, I've made it look pretty. In fact, you know what? I'm, I don't like that purple thing. I'm just going to swap that for something different. Let's do this one. I like the blue. A lot of teachers use the color coding. They'll do like all the year nine classes in blue and all the year eight classes in green or something. They'll use the color coding for that kind of thing. You can do that. Um, now that I've got a classroom set up, just it's going to operate the way I want, I need to get some people in here. So I'm going to ask uh, my student here, Kimberly, if she would join this classroom. And the way I can do that is by giving her this link here. Oh, and by the way, there's that meet link. You see when I turn the meet on there, the link is now showing on the front page. So I'm going to give Kimberly this link here. So Kimberly, could you join that classroom for me? And I know uh, if any of the rest of you are thinking about joining this classroom, unfortunately, because you're in a different domain, you won't be able to. And that's a security feature by design that stops students from wandering into the wrong classrooms from other schools. Okay, how'd you go? I am joining as we speak. Okay, so if I go to my people page here now, and any second now, I should see Kimberly pop up on that page. There she goes. Okay, so Kimberly is now in my classroom. Getting your students into a classroom is as simple as simply putting this code up on the class uh, screen. You've probably all got a screen in your classroom. They even make it really big if you want. Um, and then they type in that code uh, and then they simply join the classroom. So we have a classroom. We've set it up the way we want. We have a student. Obviously you'd have more students in a real classroom. Now let's do some actual classwork. So I come to the classwork page now here, and this is where I will actually assemble all the lessons and tasks and whatever it is I want to give my students to do. And there's really four categories of things I can ask kids to do. One is called an assignment. The other is a quiz. There's a question and a material. And I just want to differentiate between them because I think it's a really important distinction. Material is simply something you want to give students. So maybe here's some notes or here's a PDF or here's a link to a video. You're giving things to students that they don't necessarily have to do anything with and you as a teacher don't plan on tracking their progress with. That's the really the distinguishing feature of material. On the other hand, you've got assignment. An assignment is something you give kids to do and you expect them to do something and you will probably track their progress in it. That's the big difference. A quiz is exactly what it sounds like. It's a quiz. Uh, it uses Google Forms and you can do self-marking quizzes. And a question is a one-shot question, either multiple choice or short answer. So if you want to do uh, like a quick, uh, like an exit ticket or simply taking the temperature of the room or do a sort of mental health check-in, anything you can ask in a single question, that's what the question is designed for. Great for checking understanding. Uh, I'm going to go into assignment because assignment is probably the thing you'll use the most of. And I'm going to create an assignment here. And you can see what I do here is I type in the title, I'd write the instructions. Down the bottom, I have the ability to add pretty much anything I like to this assignment. So it could be something from your Google Drive. It could be a link to a website or a resource. It could be some other type of file, like a, I don't know, a Word document or a PowerPoint file or a, 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 a photo, Photoshop file, anything at all, if it's a non-Google file or you can link to a YouTube video. Between those four options, there really isn't much you can't add to an assignment. The other thing is if you didn't have a resource ready and you wanted to make one right now, there's a create button and you can use any of the Google tools, doc sheets, slides, drawings, forms to create something on the fly if you need to. Okay, so uh, over on the side here, this is where you set which classes. So if I want to set this assignment to multiple classes, I could tick multiple class names and I could send the same piece of work to multiple classes. It's great if you teach, say, a year nine A maths class and a year nine B maths class, and they're doing the same work, you can push it out to both classes simultaneously. Um, conversely, you might decide that you only want to send it to certain students. 
Now, a bit hard to demonstrate here because I only have one student, but if I had numbers of students in here, I could tick certain students' name and push work only to specific students. So great for differentiating work. You've got some other things like here for category. Remember, we created these categories before when we set up our classroom. So this might be classroom, it might be worth a certain number of points and so on and so on. That's how you set up an assignment. Now, rather than waste your time watching me set up an assignment, I want to show you what I think is one of the most useful features of Classroom. And that is, let me just go back out of here to my main class page. You'll see I've got a classroom here called the Learning Library. And I've got other classes as well that I've used previously. Here's one with 27 students in it. There's another one with 40 students. So I have classrooms that I've used previously. And what I can do is any work that exists in these classrooms currently, I can actually reuse. So if I'm back in my DLTV classroom and there's a piece of work here, say this days and dates assignment that's in my other classroom, I can just reach in and grab it. And so just to save a bit of time right now, that's what I want to show you. Let me go back to our DLTV classroom. Go to the classwork page here, hit the create button. And instead of creating an assignment, uh, a quiz or a question or a material on the fly, what you can do is if you've prepared it earlier, just go down to here to reuse post. It will open this thing up and it will show you a list of all the classrooms you've got. Come on, internet. Don't let me down. <laughs> it's thinking. So uh, this is probably the most time-saving tip I, I, when I show teachers this and they get a hang of what actually is doing. I'm just going to close that and try that again because that shouldn't be taking that long. I realize we are. There we go. So what it's seeing is it's seeing all my other classrooms here. And I'm going to go into this one called the Learning Library. And it's now seeing all the lessons and tasks and assignments and things that currently exist here. And so I'm going to get this one here called, uh, let's do, it's a multimedia project. Okay, so I'll get collect that and I'll simply reuse it. So it's taking an assignment that I've used somewhere else, bringing it into the classroom I'm currently in, and you can see it's brought in all the information so I don't have to do it on the spot. Now this particular assignment is asking students to create something. So in this case, it's creating a video. And what I'd like is a rubric attached to this so students can actually know how they're being graded. So this is going to be uh, classwork. It might be worth, well, let's see how many points it's worth. There's a button down here that says rubric. If I click on the button, I can create a rubric, reuse an existing rubric, or import one from a Google Sheet. Now, I happen to have a similar project that already has this. So I'm going to reuse that rubric. So I hope I do. Oh, no, I don't. OK, I'll have to get it from, I'll go in here, I'll go rubric, import from sheets. So I happen to have. Uh, a rubric prepared here, right here in uh, rubric imports. So I've got one here for my uh, multimedia project that's right here. So I'll say add. And now it's bringing in that rubric from another source. And here it is here. It's all prepared. You can see there it is there. I've got the different criteria. I've got the descriptions of the criteria. And if I simply say save, what I've just done is I've attached a rubric to this assignment. If I click on that now, you'll see there is the rubric. So really clear now students know exactly what they're going to be graded on. I think that's a really nice new feature. Not only that, but when you grade the student work using the rubric, it actually adds up all the points for you. So that's another nice thing. Now, so that's an example of an assignment. If I, I'm not actually attaching anything to this because in this assignment, I want my students to actually make something and give it back to me. So they might uh, create an assignment and simply say add, and then they add a link to their finished product assign that. So that's one example of how you could push a piece of work out to students. In this case, I'm asking them to do something, they make it, they hand it back to me. Let me show you another example of how you might use this. Again, I'll use the reuse post because I'm just trying to save a bit of time here. Uh, and so here is an assignment here that I've pre-prepared in advance. I'll use that one. And in this case, I am actually, uh, Stephanie, yes, you can set due dates. I didn't do it in that last one, but you definitely can do that. Uh, so I'm just bringing this one in here now. So this is an assignment called Days and Dates. And this one, it's it's essentially a worksheet. I'm not a big worksheet person, but occasionally it makes sense to give students a worksheet style task. So in this case, what I'm giving students is this Google Doc. If I just open it up and show you what that looks like, uh, and I'll share that tab instead, you'll see here is the Google Doc. So it's essentially a worksheet. Students have to fill in today's date and what tomorrow's date would be and so on. So they have to do that worksheet. now. Let me go back to my classroom. So that's what I want to give the students. I've attached it and I simply did that by going to the attach button and finding it on my Google Drive when I set the original up. But of course, I'm just reusing one here. 
once I've attached a Google Doc, I have three options. I can either get, give it to the students in a way they can simply view it. So similar to as if I gave them a PDF. Uh, so they can edit it. And by edited, it means they can all edit together at the same time. So for collaborative work, group work, kids working together on the same project, that's the option you want. But in this particular case, I actually want every student to have a copy of this so they each do their own piece of work. So I'd say make a copy for each student. Over here, I choose which classroom, which students I want to give it to. I could give it a grade category. Let's say this is uh, homework, for example. Um, I don't know how many points that one would be out of. I guess it's 24. I'd probably work that out in advance. Here's the due date. Uh, so the due date, let's make this due uh, next week. Okay. And I can add a time optional as well if I like. I can add it to a particular topic. You might have noticed I had topics on my page. This belongs in English. So I can go in there and do that. If I didn't have already done that, uh, I can assign that. I could add a rubric. I could add an originality report, which I'll talk about in just a sec. And then I assign that to the student. Okay. I know I'm going really fast here and I'm talking a lot, but hopefully that made sense. Uh, and you can see here in my classroom now. I'm going to jump in quickly and just say, just um, just for a quick pause, there have been a lot of um, questions, which is great. Um, and we will try best to get through as many as possible. But there's also been lots of awesome feature requests that people are saying, mm -hmm. can I or wouldn't it be cool if I could? And we are 100% on board. Um, and Classroom is a product that um, if you use Classroom when it was first, um released versus now you'll know the huge number of changes that have already happened but um chris i'm just wondering if we could just take a nice one moment to show you how to product feedback um yeah, because um we definitely want to hear that from you um and uh i cannot stress strongly enough that um the product teams that work behind the scenes to build these products listen to this feedback so chris is just going to show you how you can give any feature request you've ever had and then get all your students to submit it you can submit it you know build some i probably shouldn't say that nathan can you edit that part out of the video thanks mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so in classroom in particular, you notice down the bottom here, you've got this little question mark in the lower right, uh, lower left corner. Um, if you click that question mark, one of the options is to report issue or request feature. When you click that, what it will do, uh, it, you can type in here, I want this new cool feature. I think it should do X, Y, Z. Just type it in there. Um, if you want to include a screenshot, if it's relevant, you can do that. It's just thinking about it now, but you can turn that off if it's not relevant. And then you hit the send button and that feedback goes directly to the classroom team. Um, and I can tell you that uh, many Google products have billions of users. Classroom, fortunately, has a smaller user base. So I can tell you that that team reads every single piece of um, uh, uh, feedback that they get. And they do prioritize it. Uh, so nothing ever goes into a black hole with Classroom. Um, that said, just because you ask it today doesn't mean you'll get it tomorrow. Obviously, there's a prioritized list. And we, we're trying to build the things that most people want. Um, more and urgently. I, and I think Classroom did crack 100 million users. So I'm not sure it's a yeah. small oh, certainly not. Small. Certainly not. Small. <laughs> but, but yeah. It's different when you've got 2 billion users. Yeah, it not. is different to something like Gmail, correct. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in fact, most of our most of our tools, uh, whether it's doc sheets, slides, whatever it might be, um, all have a feedback feature. Generally speaking, those other tools don't have the question mark in the corner. You'll find it in the help menu. So if you do want to request feedback on pretty much any other product, uh, look in the help menu and you've got the same option there. Okay, is there any other questions I should pause for, the Kimberly? Uh, I think we can probably keep going and then you, I think, because I think you'll address some of them as you're going through. Um, one of the recurring themes is around being able to see the um, student view, um, which mm -hmm. I know is a, is a request that we here Very popular um uh, so um at this point there's no way to just toggle into seeing a student view currently um but um i'm going to share in the document that we'll share um uh, uh, some of our support pages have like great screenshots of student views and um, etc as well um but chris we are very rapidly running out of time as in uh t minus two minutes technically yeah so. yeah okay um now, I've just sent this days and dates thing to Kimberly. She has not done it yet, I don't think. I don't think she's that quick on the mark. But if, if I, as the teacher, click into this assignment and I go, okay, right now I've assigned this to one student and none of them have turned it in, right? Now, if I had a bigger class, it might say yeah, 25 kids and zero turned in. As students hand that in, they'll actually move from the assigned column into the turned in column. So I know exactly who you know I need to chase in terms of work. Now, if I view this assignment, 
I have two options here, the, the, the instructions. This is what the students see basically, or pretty close to what the students see. Um, this is the assignment that they see. And But as the teacher view, I see this student work page. Now, if I had more students, you'd see all their work lined up here on the page. Right now, I only have Kimberly. So if I click into her work, and I'll just go and look at her work here. This is called the grading interface. This is where teachers go and grade student work. So um, what uh, now, Kimberly has not done this task yet, obviously, because we're, we're not, that's not the point of the exercise. But if I wanted to grade a student here and say she typed, you know, Monday here and, oops, right, and I wanted to give her some feedback, I can actually select that and use the built in feedback tool here inside Classroom, yeah, sorry, inside Google Docs, which is this little button here, and I could leave her some feedback. Um, you yeah, know, this is right, right, and I could leave her feedback in the comments just like that. And then the thing I like about the way we handle comments in Google Docs is that um, you can actually have conversations inside the comments. So this student could come back in here and actually have a conversation with me uh, and, and put, a, put a, you know, a response to that. I could put a response to that and so on and so on. Uh, the question, how long can a meet go on in theory? Um, in theory, I don't know. Six hours, I think. I don't yeah. know. There's a limit. I was wondering. Um, yeah. but, um, it, I don't know if that was a, a question because we're supposed to, we're at the end of our time too, Chris. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it does go for a long time. Um, uh, so let me just let me just show the last thing here in the grading screen. There is a comment bank, so you can see I've got just a small selection of comments here. So if I wanted to add a comment to uh, to that work, let me just get rid of this for a second. Uh, so oh, add a comment to this work. So uh, if I wanted to leave a comment to that student's work there, uh, where is this hiding? Too many things going on on the screen, that one there. Uh, if I wanted to use something from the comment bank, here's the trick, start it with a hash. So type a hash or a pound or whatever you like to call those little hash mark things and all of your comments will appear. And the more you type, the more it will filter down. So if I want the word careful, for example, if I just start typing the word careful, CA, you see it's found the two comments with the word care in it, and then I pick the one I want. So it's really quick to use the comment feature if you can draw them out of the, um, the comment bank like that. If you wanna add more comments to the comment bank, there's an add to bank feature there and you can just type them in there. If you've got a whole page full of existing comments, just paste the whole lot into that little box and they will all be added into the comment bank. Um, no dramas. And when I'm ready to give this back to the student, I can actually return it. Now I can't return it right now because she hasn't done the work, but um, I'm just trying to give you the- Don't the, judge me as a student. Um, um, okay, I'm, I'm okay. conscious of the, um, the time and the number of questions that there are as well, um, to the point where I'm pretty sure that um, backstage, um, Nathan and Kev from DLTV are, are working out when we can schedule a next webinar as a follow-up <laughs> and maybe deep dive into some things. Um, but I did want to, so I just wanted to um, quickly, and we might, um, here you go, Kev, excellent. I read your mind, Kev. Um, so I just want to share with you um, uh, the resource that I was talking about. So uh, you should see that on your screens any moment now. So bit.ly forward slash all capitals DLTV and then webinar in lowercase will take you to this document uh, where we have linked a whole lot of the resources. Um, uh, Chris has so many dot points under his classroom that I actually linked to the, um, yep, uh, I'll pop that in the chat right now as well, um, that I've actually just linked to the classroom um, support um, homepage. And if you haven't, I'll just jump, I'll drop that in the chat and then um, uh, jump over here quickly. If you've not looked at our support pages before, um, I will just quickly flag that like this isn't like um, anything other than 100% truth. Our support pages are actually really awesome. Um, the team that build these and, su and support these and update them are amazing. I don't know how they even keep up with it, um, but you can come into, so you can see um, that I'm on the classroom help page, which is linked there, support.google.com forward slash edu and then you can put forward slash any product or you can just go to support.google.com and start looking through the different tools but you can come in here you can either describe your issue in like real English um, so it doesn't even have to be in any sort of special like um, you know um, truncated um, uh, or you can jump through and you can say okay so there were a few questions around grading and giving feedback so I can actually pop out this list and I'll say uh, how do I view all my students work in one place 
and then if I'm on a computer versus an Android device versus an iPhone or an iPad and you can see that there's always lots of screenshots and things like that in our support pages so they are really genuinely um, a great resource um, that I would really encourage you as your first point of call if you have any questions about anything uh, EDU related um, to jump onto those support pages because we all know that a random Google search um, can result in you know 50,000 YouTube videos that ramble on um, whereas the support pages are curated by Google so they're going to be a little bit more reliable. Just finally to finish off as well at the bottom of both the meet and the um, classroom section you'll see that we have this first day of meet and then first day of classroom. Uh, and these both come from our teacher center. And if you're not familiar with our teacher center, this is um, our location for all resources education related. We have a whole section in here around training where you can do self-paced courses. Um, and in light of the fact that we are at this new sort of time, you can jump in and you can get all of the basics you've ever needed to know about using classroom, using Meet, whatever it is that you wanna know about. Um, is all available on our teacher center. Once again, you can Google that, um, but it's also linked. Um, and we also do have a distance learning training course for educators as well. So if you are sort of thinking you wouldn't mind being stepped through at your own pace, some ideas around how to use the tools for distance learning, that's a really great one um, to tap into uh, as well. Uh, and then I realize I'm talking quickly, sorry, because I know we're over time. Um, I do want to flag just uh, two additional resources which are awesome that I'd love you guys to have in three that I'd like you guys to be able to tap into. Um, so um, we have this great um, website, and I'll just share my screen here, um, which is our distance learning series for um, Australia and New Zealand. And what we have as part of this is um, a number of different ways that we're supporting schools. So if you are a brand new to G Suite school um, and you're a leader or um, an IT leader in the school, we actually have set up virtual office hours. Um, and this is where you actually get on-demand one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with um, a certified trainer um, who will actually be able to help you from a leadership position uh, work through okay I'm new to G Suite what does this look like how should I best do this or from an admin side so um, some of the questions around the admin console before this is a really potentially great resource for you um, so this is really targeting those who are new and this is for school leaders and IT leaders in schools um, and I am going to jump to our other amazing resource which is more for teachers and then come back to one final resource so in the document you'll see that it says about um, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one support. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, both Chris and I have found um, incredibly valuable over the years is um, for many many years Chris and I have been part of Google's uh, extended um, uh, certified trainer and certified innovator network and um, they are just an amazing group of educators all across the world um, but the, the the team of educators down here actually um, got together and said they wanted to work out how they could best support teachers during this time um, and so this is literally the opportunity for any teacher across Australia or New Zealand to jump in and say that they would like um, some community support from a certified uh, uh, trainer or innovator um, and then someone from our community will reach out to you um, and work out how they can best support you and uh, uh, in whatever your need is. This is not a Google official thing as such. Oops. Um, this is a uh, very much a community-based um, initiative that this amazing community of educators just wanted to be able to support um, yeah. people to the best and, of their ability. And importantly, when you say the word community, it's a community of trainers, innovators, and Google education leaders. So it is people who really know what they're talking about. It's not just sort of random people. Yeah. And then um, very finally, in terms of resources, back on that same uh, distance learning series page, you'll actually notice that there is um, a Vic DET webinar series. Um, and this is, um, we put this together in conjunction with the uh, department in Victoria. We were going to be doing some face-to-face -face training with um, Victorian department teachers this term. And obviously we needed to pivot, which is the word of 2020, right? Um, and so we've moved all of them online. Um, so there is a whole lot of uh, webinars that are happening uh, every week throughout the whole term uh, you can register and receive the link live and you can join in um, this Q&A you can also watch the YouTube link of any of the ones we have gone past in the past we do have another webinar series on here as well which is our distance learning webinar series but if you are in Victoria I would probably encourage you to use the Vic DET one it's open to anyone you don't have to be a department teacher to join but the examples are all very Victorian curriculum related um, so in Victoria that is going to be the best resource for you um, and then just 
just very, very finally, uh, in the document as well, I have linked to some amazing resources that have been built by the YouTube team um, to support during this time as well. Um, and uh, we don't have time to go through them all, but I have our contact details on the screen as well. And we are already well over time. Um, so um, I will just reiterate that everything that we have talked about is, if I go back up to this link, and I think it's probably been dropped in the chat a number of times, is linked in this document here. Um, so bit.ly forward slash um, capital DLTV webinar lowercase. Um, you can see all of these linked to support pages, resources for you, and down the bottom, all of the additional resources. So our VicDET webinar series, um, our how you get into our um, office hours in, the, in other webinars, webinar support, uh, community support for one-on-one -on -one is all linked in here. Okay. Now, I just, uh, I'm just looking in the chat and I like this question from Chris Hossack saying, what's the difference between post and return? Dimas Lavi saying, could you go over originality reports? And someone else is asking about uh, getting support for specific librarians and library staff. Can I direct you guys to the community link that I put in the chat there? That's the community of uh, trainers and innovators that are willing to help you out. They'll make an appointment with you. They'll sit with you for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it might take to explain your specific question to you. Yeah, and and Kev from DLTV has already said that we will be working on how we'll um, bring you a follow up webinar as well, where we might um, we might do a bit of a survey of seeing some key areas that you might like to deep dive into. But there is also a great um, resource there for you in the webinar series that we're doing in conjunction with the department. Um, and thank you very much to um, Sam Cunningham from the uh, department who's just dropped in there um, uh, the digital learning email address for the department. So if you uh, I know someone was asking some information about privacy impact assessments and things like that um, that is a really they're a great resource for you as well all right um, I know that we definitely didn't cover every single question so we will um, uh, see if there's any key things um, and uh, feel free to uh, reach out to Chris or myself we have our contact details um, on the resource that's on the screen still um, and uh, Nathan or um, Kev I'm not sure if you wanted to say anything as we finish off uh, yeah just uh, thanks to you both. It, it's uh, it's a big task to try and cram a lot into just a one hour session. So we really do appreciate that. Um, and uh, yeah, we will discuss what we what we can do to uh, to try and uh, do something more in depth or more specific next time to to try and get into some of those other questions. Um, so yeah, thanks to you both. Uh, can I also thank Samantha Cunningham and, and uh, Deb Hicks from the department who answered a few questions regarding DET during the webinar um and uh yeah uh, thanks to all of you who participated and um yeah we will be placing the uh recording of the webinar up on our website within 10 days from now i'm just placing the url once more in, in the chat in case you're you're wondering where that's going to be um so there you go um thanks again everyone Thanks to everyone and um, uh, just on behalf of um, uh, the entire education community, thanks to all of you who are the um, you know uh, frontline workers in this space right now. Um, there is completely unprecedented times in education. Nobody is an expert in uh, this model of education, whether it's blended, got some kids in front of you, all your kids at home, whatever the situation is for you. Uh, and um, everybody, every teacher I talk to is um, slogging their guts out and doing the most amazing job. So um, kudos to you um, and uh, thank you very much for representing um, our profession so well. We're really grateful for everything you do and uh, we're, we're, we are appreciative of the fact that you are letting us come along on the journey and support you where we can. So um, stay safe, everyone. I am going to end the recording now, um, but we will hang around for a few minutes if there's any more um, questions that people uh, have. So thanks, everyone. What Kimberly said.